Hello welcome guys, I'm Lisa. And I'm Natasha. And we were wondering, are you free for coffee? Welcome, welcome. Hey guys. Okay. Today we're doing book club with Ken's book club. Which means we have a guest. Kennedy, my favorite. <laughs> today. Hi. Her favorite today. Whatever. Yeah, favorite today. <laughs> At this moment. <laughs> so follow Kennedy on Instagram, Ken's book club. Is that yes. right, Kennedy? Yeah. That's correct. Yes. Okay. And we'll we'll put the link on our page so yes. you can just you go can to follow her. To you can go to her and she's always got great recommendations and talking about cool books. Kennedy, how many books do you read a week on average? A week? Probably just like one. I like how she says that like everyone gets to read a full book a week. So probably just <laughs> one. Like that's nothing. I don't I've have the reading, bandwidth anymore. I've been reading one book now for over a month. <laughs> so, right? So yeah. <laughs> But that, that goes to prove, guys, you will get plenty of book recommendations because Lisa and I do not read that fast. Mm-mm. But we kind of that watch, much. We probably watch more TV at this point than Kennedy yeah. does. So, Kennedy, what do you have for us today? What are some of your recommendations? Yeah. Um, okay. So, I have a few. The first, Mom, I know you like historical fiction. Yes. So I just got sent this book. It's called Violetta. I, I, I bought it. Yes, I did. bought it. She just told me about I, this book yesterday. I love Isabel. Ellen. Ellen Day. Yes. She, yeah. she wrote Love in the Time of Cholera. She just mm-hmm. hyped Which book I up. loved. I, I think. She also wrote um, A Long Petal of the Sea, which was popular. She, what I like about her, she is a great historical fiction writer, but it's historical fiction that I'm really not familiar with. She's Latina. So a lot of her books are in Latin countries. So different thing, issues and things that were going on there, I'm, I'm not privy, not to, privy to or just didn't mm-hmm. realize. So it, they're so interesting and she's so... Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, they're so epic and and beautifully written. Isn't that yeah. funny? That, that you, is, I, she I literally it. just hyped me on this yesterday, Kennedy. So this, <laughs> I just checked the library. I'm doing good, y'all. Kennedy got me using. I'm like in love with the library. My kids are in love. We do still go to half price books, but we have been library snobs thanks to you. But go on, you can tell us your review. Had you had you written yeah. it? Have you read it? Or you just got no, it? No, I just got it sent to me like yesterday. Okay, um, so we're reading at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So it's about a South American woman born in 1920, and she lives for 100 years. So she dies in 2020. Um, she's the first girl in her family with like five sons. And we just follow like this epic course of her life through the Spanish flu, the Great Depression. Um, World War II, and I think Epic. I think it's going to end with COVID. I, oh my gosh! I feel. Um, so yeah, I, I love her. her voice. She's an I think it's writer. written. I think it's written as if it's like a long letter to someone that she loves, oh. and she talks about like her greatest loves and her greatest heartbreaks. She experiences poverty and wealth and loss and all these things, and so we just see life through her eyes i've heard it's really good so i can't wait okay i'm so i'm on my little list i think i get to pick mine up like thursday or friday so i will be a bit behind you all but i want to read this yeah mm-hmm. she's an excellent that, writer. that just seems i can't believe you got it kennedy look at that, that. i got it for free oh, okay, okay. I, I, you know, I'm not, not your jam person but i i think it sounds good we'll see it does it yeah. does it sounds good to me me too What's your what's your second rec? My next one is for anyone that likes messiness. It's called Wahala. So Ooh. I'm not sure what African dialect it is, but Wahala means trouble. And it's a saying typical for like Nigerians to say. And it's about three Nigerian women who are, you know, best friends. Like they've got their little girl group going on. They all deal with different things. One has, like, I think infertility issues. One is struggling at work with a lot of microaggressions. Um, They're like, some of them are married. Some are wanting to be married. All these things. 
a newcomer comes into the group and she seems like she's a good fit. She's supportive. They feel comfortable telling her things, telling her their secrets, all this stuff. But she causes some trouble Uh for the friend group and there's some drama. I think I've heard if you like like Real Housewives type stuff, then this is your type of book, which I like that type of stuff. So. A lot of you out there do. No judgment. And it's, I think it's great escapism. I'm too old for that drama, Kennedy, and I'm too from the hood. I want you to know you will catch these hands and then that's it. It's done. (laughs) So even reading that stuff, it, it causes so much angst and I get so angry. It's no longer an escape. Like I've had like five books where I'm like, this is too messy. Yeah. I just, I just want to time travel and historical fiction and then I, I have a book that I'll cover today that was surprisingly, I loved it. But that, if you like the messy, the drama, that sounds good. Yeah. And a lot of people do. I people do. People messy. love it. Yeah. Okay. So that one's Wahala. Who's, do you, who's yes. the author? Do you know? Uh, Nikki May. Okay. Nice. Okay. I have one more rec. Okay. And this is a very, I don't think either of you would like it. But oh. this is like a very me type of book. Okay. I haven't read it yet, but I already know it's going to be a five stars. It's called Breasts and Eggs. By breasts? Me. Like the body part breasts? breasts. Oh. Yes, Breasts and Eggs. Okay. By Mieko Kawakami. And this is about two sisters, and one of them has a daughter as well. And they live in this, like, working class neighborhood in Tokyo. And it's it really just, like, follows their lives and, like, their dynamics as a family. We have, like, one of the sisters who is a writer. And she's still, like, dealing with some trauma from her childhood. One of the other sisters is single. And she has a lot of anxiety that she's going to grow old, alone, and childless, which is something that she really wants a child. Um, And then we have their adolescent daughter, um, who is just dealing with being an adolescent and like growing up. And it just covers like them living together and choosing to be like vulnerable with each other and like share secrets and hopefully trying to like find some peace together as a family which is totally Mm. my type of jam i love books about complicated families (laughs) (laughs) i love complicated so you're just like a do-gooder down to your soul (laughs) i love emotional books like if it's just like i can do something that's just like happy-go-lucky as like a palate cleanser but that's not like that's not your jam yeah no. Where does the, the title, I wonder, come in? That 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 You know what I me. thought about breast and eggs? I thought about fertility. Oh, maybe. I okay. thought about like That's fertility then. and then thinking about the egg yolks and pregnancy mm-hmm. and breastfeeding okay. and nurturing. Okay. That's where it is. Yeah, I was going total strip club on this, guys. <laughs> I was like... And I think, I think, too, like, these are three women. So one, yes, is wanting, like, a child eventually. That type of thing. One deals with some type of, like, childhood trauma, which... I tend to go to like sexual trauma, but it could be anything. And then an adolescent going through like puberty and things. And so I think of just like agency over like a woman's body and like our relationship with our body and all of those things. Okay. So I can see that. Yeah. I, I can yeah. see that. I'm well, digging. those are very interesting and it gives us and a good range. They're very eclectic. Like that was a very, it was a variety and I love it. It was. Do you want to do yours first? Or you want me to cover mine? Well, I, I read, I can't say much about it because there's a little twist and the t- twist is the whole story. And I'm reading it next. But uh, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, I read. Yes. Um, Wait, and did you like it? I did. I'm reading it Strangely next, enough, like I had, you really, by the title, I thought it would be kind of soapy almost. Yeah. Um, And it's not so much. I mean, a little bit. But um, it really does take a big twist uh, that you don't see coming. So um, that was kind of cool. But I did, I did enjoy it, strangely enough, and I would recommend it. Okay, it's just it's it's I don't just know a woman's about it life. Yet. 
Yeah. And it's um, just shows you how complicated people are. She's a movie star. So, you know, from, you know, starts at the beginning of her life and, you know, how she gets to be a movie star and the whole thing, you know, trauma and just stuff women go through. But people are complicated and their lives are complicated no matter who you are. Yes. And and what you we do. So I guess that was, that's the moral of that story. <laughs> But it it was good. I could recommend it. We'll probably share more after I read it because I'm snagging the book today. It's hard. You can't really, I don't want to spoil it for anybody because it's like to talk about it, the real meat of it yeah. spoils it. It gives it away. So you just kind of have to, it, it, you know, you can't really say. Did you read it, Kennedy? No, not yet. Okay, but you got okay. it. Okay, so Tasha, what's yours? So mine is Honey Girl. Yes, cover. I love that cover. Okay, yes, the cover, it's very Kennedy. I'll have to show it to you. Okay. The cover stuck out to me, and I literally, I was at the library, and I was like, this is so Kennedy. I'm going to read this book <laughs> and, like, dedicate this, because we're there with, you know, arms full of books with at the library, and I'm like, this was such a good idea. This is an underused resource. So I end up getting the book. I am a bad book checker outer, guys. I got the book and then I got COVID and then I got the flu. So the library assumed the book was lost. So I had to call them and be like, no, I was really sick <laughs> and I'm turning it in. But I was like, I have like 27 pages left and I have to finish it. And the lady laughed. She's like, no, I get it. It's okay. So whoever was next in line, I'm so sorry. It's coming back this week. <laughs> I am down to like the last 10 pages. But so Honey Girl, it it's by Morgan Rogers. And this is like her breakout story. And we have kind of, I guess, touched on this before. I'm not exactly bashful about it. Um, just, I, you know, I'm a Christian Black woman that's bisexual, married with kids. We're, we all have, we're multifaceted. We're not just one thing. And so this book... It is written from what some would call a queer angle. I don't feel that it really is. It is about loneliness and division and striving to feel accepted. Hmm. And it is really phenomenal. And I think the transitions, the not really plot twist, just the growth and the transitions. It was really good for a short read. Like this is like it's not a long book. It's not a long book. No, Kennedy would be done three days, four days, and and so it's <laughs> it's it's not a long read, but it's good. Okay. It's it's good. And that if you've ever had like acceptance issues or parent issues or That's perceived everybody. parent issue, right? Someone's had something uh, along those lines. It is really really good, and her love interest. I don't want to give a lot away, but her love interest is Asian and watching cultures mesh is really fun. I think they did a really good job in this, in that setup. So anyway, I loved that one. It was a good one. So So, is Honey Girl a black girl? Honey Girl, she is biracial. Okay. So her father is black, very, by the book, militaristic. He's a colonel. (laughs) And... He doesn't call her her name. He calls her Porter, which is her their last name. He calls her Porter. Oh, okay. Um, and um, she calls him Colonel. She doesn't call him Dad. He calls her Porter. That sounds familiar, like Mr. King. And her mom is... <laughs> her mom is... That's an inside joke, y'all. We, we, we call my dad Mr. King. We don't call Do him Dad. Do you call him that? Yes. I thought I heard you say that, and I was like, "Why did she call this?" <laughs> yeah, we that, we don't call him dad. Now, now the now the kids call him Poppy, you know, the grandkids. But we call him, me and Mr. my King. me and my sister. We call him uh, Mr. King. We never, I, I, we don't, we never address him as dad. Kennedy, I thought she said that one day, and I was like, "Oh, she's giving me a hint as to what his name is." I had no, no idea that was just the when we see that's the greeting. Hey, Mr. King, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah it's i i love it and the mom is like a free spirit um hippie traveling the world to like find p- spiritual peace it's it, it's it's really that it, sounds fun it, it that is sounds like it's a fun book fun but there's some seriousness and there's growth it was good it was okay, and especially for this to that. be like a debut 
for this and, young lady, I thought it was really, really, I thought it was And really the good. author is really young, too. She is very I young. I want to say she's in, like, grad school or something. Yes. Oh, wow. That is correct. Yeah. And yeah. We'll, we will tag her Instagram. What did you say her name is? Her name is Morgan Rogers. Okay. And she's just so we'll be cute. on the lookout for her. She'll have more things, she will. I'm sure. And she's young. She just has cheeks. I just want to fluff. You know, to me, she's so young by, by comparison to us. But yeah, she's she's adorable. And I like her writing style. And I think it's a great book to go purchase. That sounds great. Yeah, it's definitely a good one. To I need to you put one of those know. little free libraries in my yard. You oh, know, I love those. There's lots of those yeah. around here. Um, but, you know, w- with a twist. Like it, they're they're all uh, authors of color or Ooh, something. Fun. You know, I I need a twist on it. Take that, America! Right? Okay. You know what? Another wait. Another book that has similar themes. Ooh, our bonus. To what? Honey Girl, but it's not as fun. I would say as Honey Girl. Open Water by Caleb. What's his name? Caleb Azuma Nelson. It's a love story. It's really short. You could finish it in a weekend. Huh. It's a love story about a black man and a black woman. They're British. They live in somewhere in London. And they it's just about them like falling in love. So the reason why it's called Open Water is he like he makes the comparison that like saying I love you for the first time or like falling in love feels like you're in open water. It feels like you're out in the middle of the ocean and you're just hoping that that other person will have Find the courage you. to join you <laughs> well the courage to like join you out there and like Aww. hold you up and keep you safe Love and it deals with like the it's mainly told from like the perspective of the man and it talks about his experience with like the police and like him feeling so vulnerable and so afraid a lot of the times but not feeling like he can feel that way or that he's allowed to feel that way. And his journey of like opening up to this woman about his full self and like his full range of emotions, it's really emotional. It's really, again, like about how multifaceted we all are and like the journey of like letting other people see that. It's a really beautiful. It it sounds beautiful. sounds good. Yeah. Not as fun, but it does sound good. It does. (laughs) So we wanted to talk a little bit about the book bans that you've been reading about in the news and seeing on social media. Um, Natasha, you had a list of books that are banned in Texas. Is that correct? I do. Now, is it just banned from certain school districts or or who bans books? I So that's what I was confused on. Um, It looks like it's schools, but also... Um, like Barnes and Nobles isn't selling them anymore. So you'd probably have oh. to go a little more private, which I'm not for the sake of the time of this episode. I won't probably get into this, but there is a bookstore and they do sell banned books, out of print books. It's super cool. It has a little coffee, barista, wine thing attached. It is in Bishop Arts and I love them. I can't think of the name right now, but if I think of it during the episode, I'll put it, but we're going to tag them either way. Okay. Because you can find some things that are banned. And I'm they even have some, Barnes and Noble would ban it, would not sell it. That they're not, well, they're sound... not selling it in Texas. So you can still order it online, but uh, I don't know. It's okay. just so, anyway. So what, what are some that, that so are? So the first one is The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. Which is so surprising. <laughs> yes. And so this is a, it's a story about, an 11-year-old African-American girl living in post-Great Depression, Ohio. And there's, you know, themes of violence, mental illness, racism, quite honestly, life. Right. During Especially that stage. with um, yes. people of color. And so she creates this imaginary version of herself with blue eyes. And it becomes a, co- a bit of a coping mm. um Mag- that um, was mechanism. published years ago. Yes, yes it was. Years and, and now years it's ago. banned and your girl's going to read it because I'm really interested. Um, the second one on the list is The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Oh. And I cannot pronounce the last name, but it's Stephen. Yeah, that's um, Kabaski. It, it was also a movie. Yeah. Yeah. I think this one, you know, this well, one's sexuality, abortion, mental illness, drug and alcohol use. And, you know, it's Texas. So if it has abortion in it, they're going to ban it. I, I really think that's more of that. Uh, my third one is Lawn Boy by Jonathan Evison. 
Um, this one, um, it was the author of this article said that of all five of the books on this list, this one, especially considering the student population of Texas schools, is one of the most necessary to keep in the curriculum. And it covers the, you know, journey of self-realization and acceptance of Mike Munoz, a 22-year-old Mexican laborer through his life. He's grappling with sexuality. He faces financial struggles, housing insecurity, and racism. Not understanding why that's gone, guys. (laughs) I just, it's It's, just heartbreaking. Sometimes I think that there is really a goal to ban intelligence, (laughs) And that's a whole nother episode, but and I, the I sad really thing do. is, you know, they don't want to teach it. They don't want to teach sex education. They right. don't want to uh, teach correct history. Right. At least, it, uh, where, At least where do the people books find exist. about it? Right. Yeah. But like ignorance, just, ignorance is bliss for some. So number four is City of Thieves. And this is by David Binoff. And this yes. novel is about a young Jewish Russian soldier named Lev, who's been arrested by the Russian police and forced to find a dozen eggs for one of the colonel's daughter's weddings. And so like the majority of the 50 novels on the Texas band book list, City of Thieves is a coming of age tale that deals with the same loss of innocence and subsequent emergence of maturity. Um, Significantly more violent chain events happen in this one, but they they all seem to be about self-discovery. And mm-hmm. I want to point out, you know, I always give a shout out to Mark Kells, but I, I have learned a lot from him. And he always tells me your greatest gift to yourself is to be self-aware. And I do believe there's some validity to that. And I think you'll, you'll see when people become too self-aware, it can be very hard to control them. And so it's kind of no wonder to me that the theme of all of these books have to do with people discovering themselves Mm -hmm. and becoming self-aware and sitting with themselves. The fifth book, I read this book. I I, I have to find it because I do still own it, but I don't remember much about it. It is Milk and Honey by uh, Rupi Carr. Um, It's one of the most popular books on the banned list with over 2.5 million copies that sold after its 2014 release. So this is pretty recent um we won't have any trouble finding it (laughs) yeah we won't have any trouble finding it but it says that its call for removal stems from the author's inclusion of suggestive artwork and poems that discuss sexuality and domestic abuse so milk and honey is broken up into four parts the hurting the loving the breaking and the healing in that order oh that's that's kind of interesting isn't it yeah Do you know any that are banned in Illinois, Kennedy? Um, No, not specifically. They're probably not banning um, books, are they? Kennedy's a thug. She said, I'm going to read it. no. I'm going to read it. They probably are. Like, I mean, outside of Chicago, (laughs) Illinois is very conservative. And they're also, like, like, book banning isn't new. It's actually always happening, like, a little at a time. Yes. I, I think maybe a few years ago, there was a little bit of news about a string of book banning that was going on. But like there are towns in America that will never be Toni Morrison. And they decided that decades ago. You're right. um, I think that like maybe this round feels different because it's kind of happening all over and all at once. So it's not just like Mississippi, Alabama, Texas. It's also like Missouri, parts of Oregon, Washington and you know? And it's happening on the heels of a lot of other things yeah. that, that are, that's going on, you know, so it's kind of the uh, you do, you the totality yeah, of, of everything. Yeah, it kind of hits you agree. different. I was actually just in Illinois and you are so correct. And it's not my first time visiting, but I just thought, you know, when you're not in Chicago, it it is it's, it's a very different, different yeah place. Well, yeah that you, that has to do with with urban yes, versus rural yes, yes it just in America and it is all rural <laughs> and maybe worldwide <laughs> yeah. maybe just worldwide you know just people in well, general Kennedy do you have your your sexiest man alive this week you knew it was coming are you ready I am. Can I say one other thing about the book banning? Yes. Because something that I think 
or that I was thinking about because I just got this book in the mail. It's called All That She Carried. Have you heard of it? Anyone? No. It, I I might have seen it at it's the bookstore. It's about Ashley Sack. If you know about that, maybe not. Tell well, us. Okay. Tell us. So it is an it's nonfiction. And so in the Smithsonian on display, they have something called Ashley Sack. And the story behind it is in 1850, South Carolina, there was a black woman named Rose, whose nine-year-old daughter, Ashley, was going to get sold into slavery. So they were going to get separated. Before that happened, as an act of defiance, as an act of love, and to like, just keep her going she filled the sack with a few items to help her daughter survive physically and emotionally as well right years later ashley's granddaughter so the the one that was sold into slavery at night her granddaughter whose name was wrote was ruth embroidered that history that family story onto the sack and so what's on the sack if you go to the museum the words that it says It says, my great-grandmother Rose, mother of Ashley, gave her this sack when she was sold at age nine in South Carolina. It held a tattered dress, three handfuls of pecans, a braid of Rose's hair, told her it will be filled with my love always. She never saw her again. Ashley is my grandmother. And she Mm -hmm. signed it, Ruth Middleton, 1921. And so, so beautiful. So in this book, this historian, Tia Miles, so the book is called All That She Carried. It's by Tia Miles. Okay. She takes these items and even the sack itself, and she draws these inferences about like what type of woman and what type of circumstances were Rose and Ashley under. And so she takes you through a full history. It's like a 300-page book based on what we know about those items at the time, who would have access to those items, and other people that we know that were also in that area in South Carolina who were in similar circumstances and like what we might be able to draw from their experiences. And so I think about this when it comes to book banning, because I read this review of this book that said that their first response after reading it was like, wow, it's amazing. And like this awe that like the author was able to know so much based on such little insignificant details but then the next thought was like how sad it is that we have to learn so much about insignificant details because our history hasn't been allowed to pass down yeah it hasn't been preserved Mm -hmm. yeah that's deep and so we have we've had to take control of our stories to make sure that they survive ruth embroidered her family history onto the sack and if it weren't for that like we wouldn't have known about them like at all and so like, this is true for, like, nonfiction books like this, but also, like, Tell It on the Mountain by James Baldwin. I know it's getting banned right now. The Blue Aside by Toni Morrison. Like, it, it's not just, like, history that you compare dates to, but also, like, the feeling of racism and, like, the emotional toll that it takes on us. That's also a part of our history. And so them banning these books is just, like, one other way out of a multitude of ways that they have told us that like your stories don't belong mm-hmm. here and mm-hmm. that they don't matter here. That they're insignificant. Um, yes. That's true. So well, yeah. But and, and, go to your public library though, because your public library should still have like a lot of these books, even yes. if your school library doesn't. And check half price books, Goodreads, a lot of those resale ones, they're gonna sell them till they're sold out. And I kind of make it a point to purchase books like this. Like, that's like kind of my weird jam. Even if I've never read them, it's just something, the rebel in me, when they tell you, like, it's banned, yeah, I'm like, no mm, means go. Yeah, no, that means that means I should run and buy this. So thank you, Kennedy. And I will be you making know what? some purchases. And, and on these big issues like this, oftentimes you get overwhelmed. Like, what can I as one individual do? But this is what we do. This is what we teach our children and the children around us. This is how you change and make change. Yeah. And so for me, in this little corner of our world, on on our internet world, for us talking about it and talking about these books and bringing them to you, this is our way of making a change. Continuing to shed light and to preserve. 
this is what we do. Yeah. This is what we I do agree. and how we keep it going. We we read. We we make sure our children read it. We make sure we tell our kids about it. Right. And th- this is how we keep it going. Yeah. Keep the torch. Yeah. Going forward. God, we need the sexiest man alive. Like, I don't even feel <laughs> like it anymore, to be honest. Not feeling so, real sexy. I'm not feeling real <laughs> sexy, guys. I am just like, that one, oh man, that one kind of took me out. Um, I will double back. <clears throat> the location in Dallas, it's in Bishop Arts, um, which is just Old Oak Cliff, really. But it is called The Wild Detectives. Okay. And I've been there, oh man, several times. Um, what a cool name. It is. The the ambiance, the, it's, the vibe, everything is really cool. They don't mind if you sit in there and read. They also are pretty good about helping you find stuff. They're connected to other like indie bookstores. And so... If they don't have it, if they can't get it, they can typically help you find it too. Hence the name. Yes, <laughs> which is really, really nice. I love independent bookstores, but it's an independent bookstore bar. Okay. Which is cool. Makes it even better. <laughs> okay, Kennedy, give us the sexiest mm-hmm. man alive this yes, week. Yes, you got? Okay. Do y'all watch Euphoria? No, everyone's trying not. to get me to. Him. I haven't. Oh, Connor told me well, about it, but that's okay. You, you won't like it, Mom. Don't don't you try it. Okay. But my sexiest man is Angus Cloud, who plays Fez on Euphoria. Okay. Um, he's kind of like he reminds me of Mac Miller. If y'all remember that rapper. I do. I he's do. this white boy that just like he has a little bit of swag to him. Like this past week he was uh, in this video, because he was sitting next to Mike the Stallion at some fancy fashion week show, and he was just sitting there, like in couture, eating flaming hot Cheetos. Like <laughs> that's the type of style and confidence that I love. And so he's just like so cute to me, and I love his character on Euphoria too. Okay. okay. Yeah, that show would not do anything for me, but he's cute. I just had to look him up because I was like. I don't know who this is. And he definitely has Mac. He has Mac Miller, mm. Mac Miller vibes. That's for sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Who's your person, Lisa? Um, I'm going to pick Tay Diggs. Oh, girl. Yes. And he's Tay a little Diggs. short for me. A little, you know, a little young for me. I'm starting to rob the cradle because they're all the ones we, my age are, are, are dead. <laughs> but, um, you know, but he has really aged well. He has aged well. And if he's... It's not a show I watch regularly, but I have seen it called The All American. He plays yes. a coach, yeah. and he's really sexy to me. He just has a he just has swag to me. He always has had. You know, he was married to I'm not going to get her name right, but Adina. Yes, the yeah. one who sings Fro- the Frozen song. Yeah. So I Elsa, do know that. Elsa. Yeah. yeah, but he is he's pretty swaggy. Uh, a little short for me, to be honest. You know what he? But he he's, passed my he's short cute. test. He's hot. Yeah, yeah, I always thought he was. So I started, I'm very late, guys. And you know, I don't watch anything really when it's like happening. I'm just not good at it. So I started watching The Office after peer pressure from my friend Hattie and her husband. And I am in love with the show. (laughs) It's like our jam. We had a little sneak date night and we watched it last night with Boba. So I'm going to go with John Krasinski. He is cute. He's he's tall. He's 6'3". Oh, no, that's nice. <laughs> he's tall, he's funny, and he's skinny. And you guys all know my Pete Davidson. I have a theory about tall, skinny, lanky guys. Like, there's a reason. That's your jam. There's that's a your reason jam. women flock to them. And my, funny, yeah. They're fun. yeah. My husband is, to, he, now he's not lanky anymore because I can cook, but he used to be tall and skinny and funny and they are my jam. So you have a tie. I have a tie. Okay. Yeah. So he is he is my guy. And I told my husband last night that he's the gym to my Pam. So I love <laughs> I love that show. That's so that's cute. mine. That's mine. Oh, we have three this week. We never have three sexy men. Yeah, except when Kennedy comes. Ooh, nice. Yeah, we did it last time. And, <laughs> and she had uh Harry Styles, I she think. She did, she did. And I had Kennedy's kind of got a type too. She does. We're not gonna No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, you no, do. do I'm 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 seeing it. It's, I, yeah, it's there's coming a trend. into focus. Well, you know, we need it takes three times for a pattern. So next time we have you, we'll know if you have a type for sure. <laughs> 
Well, guys, that is it for our show. Please make sure you follow Kennedy on Instagram at Ken's Book Club. And we will tag all of these lovely books. We'll tag her page. We'll tag Wild Detectives. And then once I read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, I will give you my feedback. Yeah. And then I'm sure. And, and when Kennedy reads it. Yeah. yeah. And then at least y'all are reading, is it Violetta? I want to make sure I get it right. Oh, yes. So we'll kind of know that. And I'm also opinion. reading Kennedy, the songs of W.E. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you already read you that? Got Be, I did get, I got, but those two, those are the two that I got. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was an Oprah book club pick. It is. Ooh, y'all are fancy. I'm not. Yeah, the, the the love songs of W. E. B. E. B. Du, du Bois. Bois. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's. I've seen it. I've never read it. So, so those are my two that I'm working on now. Good deal. Good deal. Okay, guys. Until next time. Oh my gosh, we're gonna have to go back. Okay, loves, thank you for grabbing the chair and joining us for coffee. Please subscribe to Are You Free for Coffee podcast wherever you're listening. We hope that you enjoyed today's episode and find joy in the little things. Until next time.